Hi, my name is Jason. I am a visual media communicator. On this channel, I talk about photography, videography, and the tools and gear we use to produce it. Today's video is about the Ultimate Nikon Z6 rig, and there's a few things that I think that make this rig ultimate and compared to some of the other rig videos I have seen. I have watched a lot of other rig videos, and I really appreciate the effort other people have put in out there to uh, show off their rigs. Uh, all of those were excellent learning tools because um, I don't have a bunch of other videographers living on my street that I can tap for info. So those videos were extremely helpful to figure out what things I would think I would not like and what things I think I would and things I thought that I could improve upon. One of the big things that I wanted to improve upon was the movement from sticks to shoulder and then back to sticks. That was accomplished using uh, the Sony VCT mounting system. Most people used a small rig rail system like this and small rig makes a shoulder pad that you can slide onto the rails and then have your shoulder pad on your rails. But every rig that I've seen that way, people have had to slide that shoulder pad back off and then slide on a tripod mount block or have it such a long rail that the tripod mount was someplace other than where the shoulder pad was, not the center of gravity for the camera. So there's pros and cons to that. Um, a lot of it was slow. If you are on set and you have crew and you have actors, you have locations that you're renting, you have time schedules for things, every time you have to take apart your rig and put your rig back together is time lost for production and that can cost you money, it can cost you time, it can cost you not getting the job done if you only have a set amount of time for everyone to be there to do it. So with the Sony VCT plate, one of the things that's awesome about this is that we can take this right off the tripod and go straight on the shoulder. And with this setup right here, I have the shoulder pad right on it where it needs to be. I have uh, my Nucleus Nano Control right there at thumb height, so I can control that. I have two grips here if I want to go into auto for some reason and not have to worry about uh, controlling the focus up there. And then if I need to go back to uh, the tripod and go back to sticks, I can just line this up and slide this right back in. Just like that. And I'm back on set for sticks. So going from sticks to shoulder and back to sticks is so fast with this rig here. And this was the best way to do it. And the way the Sony VCT plate works, let me slide this back off. So it's basically like a V-mount battery in the bottom. You have a V-plate that slides into a locking pin up here. And then down here, you just have a little small spot that locks onto a screw on the bottom of this plate. Now this is a Manfrotto, um, I think it's the 504. Yep, 504 HD fluid head tripod. It has nice uh, controls for pan and tilt. It has uh, wonderful um, fluid movement for it, so you can get nice, easy pans. You can control the resistance for pans and tilts on it. Um, very height adjustable. This thing goes up to about here on me. And then, all you have to do to use the Sony VCT plate is take the normal Manfrotto 501 plate that comes with the tripod and screw that onto your Sony VCT and then you just lock that in here and you're ready to go. Either way though, let's walk over what's actually on this rig. Um, we have a single uh, battery source on this. This battery is the only battery on everything here and it's powering the Atomos Ninja 5 monitor on here. It's powering the, the hand control and it's also powering the Nucleus motor and the Nikon Z6 itself. Uh, I wanted to have everything on a single source of power so I didn't have to worry about swapping batteries out, I didn't have to worry about extra weight, because I knew I wanted the VCT, oh, sorry, I, I knew I wanted the V-mount battery back here to power the Nikon, but there was really no reason to have the extra weight of a NPF battery up here, or the worry about having rechargeable batteries for this, and then a USB brick, which you see a lot of people use, a little USB power source, uh, like Velcroed up here or someplace else on the rig that I see people use a lot for the Nucleus motor. So having it all on here was really nice. Everything I was able to run on this, I have ran a small rail block here that keeps some of the cables contained. Two of them are loose. Um, this one actually sits up here nicely because it's a coil cable. Um, the other one's just kind of folded and you can easily zip tie that if it's a problem for you. But they all run, and they run down here along the uh, base of the VCT shoulder mount pad. That allows you to take the camera off of this rig very easily. Now this is a small rig um, half cage, and the reason I chose the half cage is that I will typically use 
uh, this camera for photography as well if I'm doing product shots or location shooting and I need to have some products to go along with the video content that I'm filming. Um, having the half cage allows me to throw a lever, and I'll show that here in a little bit, slide this out, and now I have my camera handheld, not part of this rig, so I can use it for photography really easily and then slide it right back in, where the full cage um, requires uh, tools to take it out, in and out of the, uh, of the cage. So all the cables on here are all routed around um, areas where the camera is not going to interfere with it if I take the camera on and off. And that was, that was important to me on that. The, um, the Nucleus Nano motor here, uh, this guy uh, from Tilta, they make a DTAP to micro USB cable to power this off of a DTAP plug. Problem was though, is that if I wanted to route this uh, nicely through the camera um, setup here, that it was not gonna work, it was too short. Uh, it just barely reached from the DTAP plug straight across. I, I think they meant for that uh, DTAP plug to be a uh, DTAP battery is mounted below the camera. Um, so I couldn't use the cable that they did. Uh, I ended up making my own. Just uh, cut a wire in half uh, that was a DTAP and cut one that was micro USB and soldered them together and shrink wrapped them right here, uh, heat shrink tubing. If that's beyond the tools or skill set that you have, uh, there's another option I'm going to show here on the video. It And it's also linked down below. And that is a hub that you can get. Um, that allows you to power it and the power feed off of this V-mount plate uh, supports two amps. So you can get that little uh, USB hub power off of this um, V-mount plate and then that'll provide four other USBs, one for the Nucleus hand control and then one for the motor. The, the advantage though of running straight into this if you can is that running 12 volts into the motor or 14 volts into the motor rather than the five volt that USB supplies allows this motor to have slightly higher torque. Now you may notice that on a lot of these um, batteries, there is not um, not only the, the V-mount plate um, connectors on the bottom here, but there's also a USB and DTAP here. I experimented with that. The USB in here is activated when you push the button over here to see how much uh, battery life you still have. That turns on the circuitry in the battery um, to activate the USB plug on this. Uh, the problem though is that the Nucleus motor, unless you're actually constantly activating it, uh, or the hand control both, neither one uh, draws enough current to make this think that it's active and eventually it times out and turns off. Uh, big problem if you're trying to actually capture scenes uh, on set and then all of a sudden your hand control doesn't work and you're trying to pull focus. So, and it wasn't a flaw with the battery. I have two of these batteries, they both perform the same way. They're different brands. One is um, Tether Tools on site. This is newer. So battery stuff aside, uh, you won't be able to run a USB off of the V plate, V mount plate, and you won't be able to run it off of this at the same time. You'll have to either run a USB hub and do one off of the plate because the plate does not have the limitation of having to require a, a certain amount of current to be able to keep it active. Or you could do like I did and make a, a DTAP plug for your Nucleus motor. Just don't get them confused because that's a raw 14 volts into the Nucleus motor. That's probably not healthy for the hand control if you were to plug that in there. But this plate is nice. This is a Camvate plate. The link is below as well for this. Um, it has a USB. Uh, it has a 12 volt, a DTAP, and a seven volt um, plug on here. So, and the nice thing is that uh, it comes with some of these cables so you don't have to go out and buy a bunch of these cables. This is a few parts you have to buy to be able to power everything off of this uh, one plate. Now, if you want to convert this, like I said, into a photography unit, uh, what we need to do, the first thing, is take the Nucleus motor and just move it up a little bit so it's not engaged with the teeth. And while I'm talking about this, one thing to point out is that the uh, if you have a cage for your Nikon, this right here uh, method I'll show when I do the build on this, is uh, very useful to be able to run the Nucleus motor on here and actually have it engage with the, the focus uh, on these lenses. Most of the Nikon Z lenses, the focus ring is way in the back. And uh, traditionally that would be a problem if you were to run your Nucleus motor off of the lower rails. Uh, but having it on the upside or the upper rail up here that I added in allows it to be flipped upside down and also backwards so the, the gearing tooth is closest back to the cage 
and it's just, uh, just enough room to make contact and actually turn the focusing mechanism back there. So with all that said, um, if you want to turn this into a photography camera, first thing you have to do to move the nucleus motor out of the way a little bit is take off the um, little add-on gear here so that it can catch. So take that off. Now we'll need to loosen the connection to the Atomus from the uh, HDMI cable there. Make sure that's out of the way. We just flip this lever. And then there's a little safety catch back here. So you can slide the Nikon back. That comes out. We're still using the dummy battery here for the V-mount. So turn the camera off, pop that dummy battery out of there. And grab a normal Nikon battery, pop it in. And now we're ready to go uh, as a photography camera again. And then this also has a quarter 20 uh, thread on the bottom of it here too. So if you need to screw on a base plate for an Arca Swiss for your normal tripod or a spider holster, like I use that a lot when I'm doing photography so I can clip it on there. You can screw it right in this. I don't have to take anything else apart. So very convenient to take this from a, a video rig into a photography rig and also slide it right back in there again and get it ready for the video shoot when you get back to that point too. Slide it in, lock this. The only thing we need to do that is just pop the battery out, put the V-mount battery back in, and away we go. All right, so let's break this down and uh, look at all the parts I use and the individual pieces for this.
So that's it. That's the Nikon Ultimate Z6 rig. Um, quick on and off sticks. Very versatile, very uh, modular. And the nice thing about this rig too, with the VCT plate and uh, the shoulder rig, that we can uh, take this Nikon Z6 off of here and throw a different camera on there. We can put a Black Magic on there. We can go to an Ursa Mini on this same mount. Anything that is uh, good enough size to go onto a 501 plate can also go onto this rig pretty easily as well. And with the V-mount power back here, uh, with DTAP, it allows a lot of versatility on what you can actually mount on this and use this rig for. So if you found this video useful, please hit the like button down below. Uh, really appreciate that. I uh, appreciate it a lot if you would subscribe as well. If you found this interesting, you'd like to have more content like this. Um, I'm a recovering IT person, so I have a tendency to really jump in and uh, play with things. And all this uh, rigging is uh, like Legos for adults. Uh, it's great. So hopefully you found this useful. Um, thanks again for watching. I hope you guys have a great day. And I hope this inspires you to get out there and make something and create uh, with the gear that you have. Until then, have a good one.